So emotion over logic, always. You're not selling shoes, you're selling comfort and style, you're not selling an acne serum, you're selling clear skin with no breakouts, and you're not selling a sleep supplement, you're selling deep and restful sleep. Pixel data is pretty much gone, interests are disappearing, retargeting audiences are insanely ineffective, and nowadays, your competitive advantage is no longer more pixel data, but your creatives. It's all about consolidating campaigns, going broad, and focusing on creative testing. With first-party data, creative is your targeting. Number one, research. Getting inside the mind of the consumer and making sure they know how to craft that creative angle. A great place to do that, Amazon reviews, Reddit, YouTube comments, TikTok comments, and then the execution part is understanding performance design best practices. And that having the eye for that really comes through making ads, testing them, and learning from your own ads, but also learning from brands that do that very well. So obviously, Facebook Ads Library, TikTok Creative Center, Addison.io is a really cool tool. Um, D2C Nation and D2C, et cetera, these are really nice brand directories that you can look for brands to then search in the Facebook Ads Creative Library. These are brands that are investing heavily on paid acquisition, so you can learn a lot from them and their strategies. So the co copywriters and creative strategists are trained with the same principles for creating great ads. Um, let's talk about specifically about the copywriter. Um, I say direct response ad copywriter because it's very different from a copywriter. A copywriter is too broad. Um, they don't necessarily have to be good writers. The average American reads at a seventh grade level. That's literally 12 years old. So it's not about being a good writer. It's about understanding consumer psychology and customer behavior. And what they do is they write the scripts for your ads and write your ad copy. Um, fundamentally, the number one thing they need to know is that you're not selling a product, you're selling a problem that it solves and how it makes people feel. So emotion over logic, always. You're not selling shoes, you're selling comfort and style, you're not selling an acne serum, you're selling clear skin with no breakouts, and you're not selling a sleep supplement, you're selling deep and restful sleep. And then the direct response copywriting formula that we always consider when crafting everything from ad scripts to co ad copy is identifying the problem, calling it out, a burning pain points that they want to solve, agitating it a little bit, how does it manifest, what happens if it doesn't get solved, and then discrediting your competition, like I've tried this before but it didn't work, and then finally presenting the solution, connecting it to the problem with a strong call to action. So this is our creative strategy map. This is what we use every single step of the way whenever we're making an ad, we start with this framework. What is the pain point? What is the unique selling point that is going to address this pain point? And then crafting a hook and a call to action, and that becomes your creative angle. So a quick example of what it looks like, um, if you've identified three different creative angles for a protein shake, for example. Um, people don't like the taste of protein shakes, they want convenience, a meal done very quickly, or they're price conscious. So this is what the creative strategy team would pass along to the rest of the content team to help inform everything from ad scripts um, that the con content creators will produce for us. So let's talk about the content creators. Um, this is the production team. It's the second step in the ad making process. I have tried so many solutions from shipping products to people, having them shoot content, and it's very hit or miss. It's very hard to rely on at scale. So what we do at Creative Milkshake is we have a content production team which directs the content creators in a studio environment. They choose the content creators and they shoot the content to create UGC or AGC, actor-generated content. So when you're looking for content creators, you want to find people that are naturally content confident, sound authentic, are charismatic, 
And they also need to have a good voice. This sounds weird, but it makes a huge difference on ads. Having someone that speaks clearly, is eloquent, and being mindful of their accent for whatever region you are targeting. Um, and what they do is shoot content with your products or act out the scripts written for your ads. Um, to train your content creators, it's really important to have them understand how to shoot content. And TikTok Creative Center has a really nice resource for behind the camera um, that teaches them how to shoot these native looking transitions. Always shooting in daylight sounds pretty straightforward, but it makes a huge difference. And the basic equipment that they need is an iPhone, a tripod, and a ring light. And for your content creators or production team, they need to master capturing three different kinds of content. And I'm going to give you some examples. So product shots are unboxing videos, product close-ups, pans, and flat lays. The goal for this is to showcase the experience of receiving the product and using it, so focusing on the packaging, the texture, and so on. Then the next is product demonstration or lifestyle videos. So this shows how to use your product, how it fits into your customers' lives, and answers frequently asked questions. The next kind of shots are the talking head shots. And there's three different types of talking head. There's the selfie mode, which is when the content creator is literally like this. There's a talking head with product, which is when they're talking, holding, and showing the product. And then there's the green screen effect, which is very popular on TikTok. With three, these different kinds of content in your creative arsenal, you can make amazing ads. OK, so now you have all the content you need. It's time to hand it over to your post-production team or your video editors to turn it into ads. It's such a headache to work with a video editing team that is not familiar with performance design. That's like the final piece to the puzzle. It's what brings everything together. So it's really important to train video editors on the best practices for social media ads. And here's what they're good at. They're good at using multiple tools to edit videos and graphics. Motion graphic skills are a bonus. Um, but if you're making only TikTok ads, the TikTok editor app is enough, or an app like CapCut will do it, because you don't need many video editing skills. You just want to make TikToks that look like TikToks. Um, and what they do is they turn the content into ads that are ready to go live. In our video editing team, we basically have two different guides for the two different platforms, because they're completely different. And I'll go through each of them. For Facebook, it's really important for them to understand that the target audience matters, the ad placement matters, that the creative is for, and the level of awareness of the user that we're targeting. So the Facebook editing guide is a bit more complex um, because Facebook has so many different placements and so many possibilities. Your creatives should look and feel different based on your target audience. One of the main variables is the age you're targeting. So we identified three different age groups and what the ads should look like. So for Gen Z, it's all about fast transitions, aesthetics. It has to look and feel very native. You hop on TikTok trends. You use native fonts and elements. And the goal really is to make ads that don't look like ads. For millennials, these are consumers with a bit more money to spend. It's all about the information, the functionality, and going deep into the benefits, ingredients. Is it sustainable? Is it good for me? Is it good for the environment? So all about information and functionality. For boomers, the ads, these are actually one of my favorite ads to make because and audiences to target because they have more money to spend. And the ads are a lot slower. They really focus on the pain points you're trying to solve. Um, they use a lot of storytelling. And they look and feel basically like an infomercial. Another thing to keep in mind for Facebook ads is even though they're UGC and they look and feel native, you can follow the brand guidelines so that the ads use the brand's fonts and colors, 
or you can follow the Facebook design system so that it looks that it like it was created inside Facebook. There is no right or wrong. You can test both and determine what, wor what works best for you and your brand. Another video editing hack for Facebook is unlike TikTok, Facebook users scroll through Facebook and Instagram with their sound off. So it's important to always design for sound off. Use captions, text layovers, emojis, whatever you need to make the ad engaging and effective, even if it's watched with the sound off. Another video editing hack is split screen. This works really well. We often make ads that shows the person and the product on the other side. Um, if it's a vertical ad for Instagram or Reels, you can split the screen three ways. Um, and also using a grid creates that social proof effect of multiple people using or talking about the product at the same time. The goal is to really make it a lot going on in that first frame. Another video editing hack is if it's a talking head, crop and zoom out any empty space. And while people are talking, zoom into their face. Um, this also makes it a lot more engaging to watch. Another rule is the 1.5 second rule. Something always happens every 1.5 seconds. Whenever I get a video back from post-production, I watch it and I'm like, no, go back, fix it. 1.5 second rule, something always has to happen. OK, aspect ratios. We always, always create square portraits and vertical versions of every creative. I like to customize creatives for all placements instead of relying on Facebook's auto crop feature or running square videos on stories is literally my biggest pet peeve. Um, and that's pretty much it for Facebook. The TikTok editing guide is super simple compared to Facebook. The most important thing to keep in mind is that a thumb stop on TikTok is 0.3 to 1 seconds according to their internal data. Attention spans are even shorter than on Instagram and Facebook, which is around three seconds. So your hooks better be amazing or people are going to keep scrolling through. So what's important with making TikTok ads? Designing the first frame, creating a hook that slaps, only using fast, clean cut transitions because any other kind of transitions will stand out as a, will looking like an ad, like it wasn't done on TikTok making them really short and to the point, so always 30 seconds, ideally 15 seconds, following TikTok native design system, and considering TikTok safe space. So this is what I mean by first frame design. So using TikTok's native elements, the questions box, the TikTok text box, playing around with different fonts, adding emojis, and this is the TikTok design system. This is our internal team's um, kind of cheat sheets because if you're making TikTok ads outside of TikTok, you still want it to look like it was done inside TikTok. So our team uses this TikTok design system to make sure that we're only using the native fonts and that the text is always placed within the safe space.